Let me start by saying I'm Doug Heimbaugh. I am from Toledo, Ohio, but it took me a, a few places around the country to find out that this is where I belonged. Uh, I, am, I left as a printer and I came back as a photographer and through a lot of street photography, nature photography, public art photography, my hobby has turned into now my career as I walked away from a full-time job for the first time in my life on purpose back in the end of May. and. We're gonna give this a real shot. Photography has been around my entire life since I was a little kid. My Uncle Marty was a professional photographer on top of being an Oregon police officer, on top of being one of their weapons purchasers for the SWAT team, on top of being their forensic photographer. He basically was the jack of all trades and I think I got a little bit of that maybe from him or that part of the family, but he, my mom was also a huge shutter bug and you know, still is to this day when she gets the chance, but uh, he was able to supply her with the type of camera and lenses that she needed, Canon stuff back in the day. And so I grew up with having a camera in my face all the time. And as I got a little older and maybe pushed towards the teen years, you know, oh, I'm gonna take some, those disposables came out, the 35 millimeter disposables, 110 disposables, and those were fantastic. They were cheap. It was something I could buy with my allowance. We had to budget to make sure like, oh boy, you got 10 bucks for this week and it's gonna cost you $8 for that roll of film. You can have enough left over to develop it. Big decisions when you're a kid. But it was something that, it made me take it seriously. It made me see that there was a serious art to it, that there was a serious dedication to it. You know, and I watched what my uncle did and how much time he would spend just to take a photo shoot when my mom wanted some pictures of me or my sister. And we would spend hours in his studio just to end up with six shots. And back then I didn't get it. I was an antsy kid. I wanted to, you know, do something, see what all other cool stuff my uncle's got over at his house. And no, Doug, stay there. Turn your head a little bit. No, just look back a little bit. Let me move this light and you know the drill. So, but I, as I've gotten older and coming to my own, I know what he was going for. And I took a big break after high school where, you know, maybe a couple random digital cameras that I, somebody, a friend gave me second hand that I kept around or some disposables and I'd shoot some stuff here and there. I do have some digital stuff from the, the 90s and I used to have a lot of film stuff from high school that got kind of lost along the way. But uh, yeah, as I, as I look back, photography has always been a part of my life. Even when I took the break from taking a lot of photos, being in the printing world, that's what I did every day was take somebody else's art that was put onto a, a layout meant to be put on a page and I would replicate that with my job being to make what I'm putting on paper look as close to what was given to me as an artistic rendering and then make the first sheet look like the 10,000th sheet and every sheet in between. It's all about consistency and that plays very heavily into my photography and so this, is, this has all added up to be what you see right now and every time I come up as surprised about something it's because you're probably seeing me learn it for the first time so about three and a half years ago I got my first digital camera for Christmas from my mom and my sister I had quit drinking just over five years ago and they wanted to make sure I stayed on that path had seen me taking some cell phone photos down in Houston at a big car show that they have down there the ABC 13 station down there picked it up on Reddit and on Imager and said, hey, these are some pretty cool photos. You mind if we put them on our website? I did, and it just kept going from there. And car photos turned into photos of my dog, which turned into maybe a photo of deer. Ooh, I like this forest. Let's go out here. And it just keeps on going. I have varied interests, and photography gives me a perfect excuse to dive into all of them. I'd say my style, I call it kind of stop and pop. And it, whether that means I'm on foot or in the car, it means that I am constantly moving and I catch stuff fast, I capture it fast, and I move on to the next thing. And unless it's something that's going to take some time and some composing, or maybe I'm just not in a hurry, my style is to move. And that's where I'm so perfectly suited for events and for you know, things where there's going to be people that are going to be moving around or, you know, elements that are going to be changing. Got to think fast, got to think on the move, and that's what I'm suited to. So I say that's where I'm, I'm most effective. I had, I had so many people, whether solicited or not, give me advice when I was getting into this, whether it was on Reddit or through the early days of Instagram, telling me that, and it was kind of an overwhelming sentiment that I should probably pick pick a lane and stick to it 
and I'm a bit of a contrarian by nature and maybe I did it to spite them or maybe it's just because I followed my heart and my interests, but I like taking photos of a lot of stuff and I didn't just want to be a car photographer or a wedding photographer. I like the ability to take a good photo of anything that catches my interest or that somebody tasks me to go take photos of. Uh, one thing I prided myself on in my printing career for a lot of years, and it was unfortunate that I got laid off a lot and had to be the new person starting at a new shop a lot, but I have the ability to walk into any print shop. You, you can pick it. You take me there and set me down, and odds are I'm gonna be able to run just about every machine in that shop. I don't care if it's Japanese, I don't care if it's German, I don't care if it's American, I got this, that's what I do. And that's what I wanna go for with my photography. I wanna be able to walk into any situation, look around, make an assessment and say, I got this. There's something about people, life, I mean, I've spent so many years by myself and all alone. Uh, my alcoholism caused me to self-isolate. Maybe a lot of the elements of me moving away from Toledo and getting away from things were so that I didn't have to own up and take responsibility for the state of my life. I, you know, I was a little lost in myself and something that always made me feel good was people. But when I didn't feel good, I didn't want to be around people. Once I, I found some strength and tackled that demon, there was nothing that I wanted more than to be back out in public. Those car shows were the beginning of it, of me kind of dipping my foot back in the toe of, you know, being a, a person and being a human. And part of being human is interacting with other people and forming bonds and relationships and finding things that are in common. And as much as I can do on my own, it's nothing compared to what I can do with the help of a few friends or even a community. And I've come to really respect and admire people that do that. That's something that I would like to do. I try to be as involved as I can um, because I didn't get here on my own. Like I, I wasn't winning at life when I tried to do it on my own. But when I opened myself up to let other people in, that's when things really started changing and getting better. And I have to give that back because nobody had to do that for me, but they did because they cared and they saw something special in me and thought I was a good person that deserved a decent life. And I see the same thing in a lot of other people, even when I didn't have the strength to see it in myself. And now I have the courage, the energy, and the focus to, to get out there and do that. And this camera is taking me to all kinds of places and I would be a fool to not try to bring everybody along that I can. I am very easily amused, so it doesn't take a whole lot. It's funny, when I was a kid, I, my mom would probably sit here and be giving me the look or giving you the look and saying she knows exactly what I'm talking about, but I could be bored in any situation. And I think it was because I was a boring person, maybe. I was looking to be bored. I didn't want to entertain myself. And as I've gotten older and you know found so many of the little beauties and the tiny things in life, a lot of my photography is, you know, maybe a gritty situation that has a little pop of color in it. Things like that are, are what kind of draw me to it. And I, I do get blocks every once in a while when I find myself focused on a specific subject or something that my striving to be perfect or to get it as close to perfection as I can allows me to maybe overlook a lot of good. So when, I, when I'm stuck on maybe one thing that a sunrise that with a certain set of clouds and I want this, this kind of color set to it and I don't want it to be too hazy and I want to catch it right as the ball breaks the horizon, not too high, not too low, and I miss it or the clouds just happen to be in the way for that one second where the sun was trying to do what I needed it to do and that frustration that comes from knowing that I have to do it again the next day or the day after that. But there's something inside of me that overcomes that and that frustration gets drowned out by my motivation to succeed and go get that. So you see me again back out there the next day and I'll get it or something close to it and something that makes me happy. So the challenges will come and go, but my motivation isn't waning. I don't know what it is. I feel I'm having fun and I hope it comes out in what I do. I hope it comes out when I talk to people and I don't ever mean to rub it in. I've I've been that person that was in the miserable job for a long time and maybe resenting or envying people that looked like they were having a good time while they were on the clock. And nothing was gonna change, nothing arbitrary was gonna pop out of the universe and just say, hey, here you go, here's something fun. Oh, and here's a paycheck to go along with it. I had to make that happen. And 
this is by me not compromising on some base level things that I've been broke and miserable. But being broke's easy, but being happy, that's kind of hard. That takes some work and that's a choice. So I choose to be happy and I found something that, that really brings that out in me. And I've also kind of turned it into a way to, to make a living off of. Now, whether I can sustain, sustain it or not, we'll see how that goes, but it's gonna be really hard to steer me off of this course. And that's what motivates me, that I want to do something meaningful and something that affects people, but also not have to worry about where I'm gonna live next month or where you know how i'm going to get my car fixed or, or things like that so a lot of the same basic security needs that everybody has or you know that's kind of at the baseline of it but the overarching theme is i want to be happy and if i can make other people happy too and i found an outlet with that my photography and i'm going at it i have no reason not to it seems like i maybe sped through a lot of this process i kind of I feel like I do skip a lot of things in leaps and bounds, but I feel that's because I'm a, a pretty aware person and I've paid attention to the careers and the paths of people around me, the people that I look up to and respect because I've tried to nurture relationships. I have a lot of good friends that are willing to give me the hard talks and tell me stuff. So if you just came up to me and I didn't know much about you, I'd say don't do what I just did. It's not easy and you have no idea what you're getting into. but. If you're ready to lay a foundation like I did, take your time, not build it around, this is all or nothing, this has to be a full-time job or I'm not doing it, and accept that there's gonna be some bumps, there's gonna be some curves, there's gonna be some elements where you don't know how to get past a wall. And me making it look easy sometimes is, you're only seeing those few seconds of the win, but you're not seeing the days and weeks and months that I'm out there doing this every single day to make this happen. If you're ready to commit to that, I'd say go for it. The world's your oyster. And the more I do this, the more I'm finding out. There's things that are out there for you. You just gotta have the courage to ask for it. You gotta set your sights on something and say, this is what I wanna do. This is who I wanna be. These are the people that I wanna surround myself and align myself with. And I'm riding this to the moon and go for it but if you're somebody that just it looks kind of fun but i don't really know what is all involved i'd say go do your homework because this ain't easy i'd say to me art is anything that evokes an emotion in somebody and that is a really broad definition but i have come to accept that i saw a photo that a woman sent me she's a a poet today on Instagram and it was what looked to be maybe a four by five old school black and white print that the faces of a couple that were in what was probably a wedding setup uh, were cut out into the shape of a heart and she looked at that and assumed it automatically went into a locket well I thought you know I'm of the age where I, c I can see that but a lot of younger kids nowadays they may not see they may look at that black and white photo and see the heart cut out and think you know why would somebody do that to a photo and the fact that it even something so simple, some little four by five square of paper with some you know, photosensitive material on it that recaptured an image and reproduced it, that, that brought that many different feelings out of different people, that's fantastic to me. Now whether that's a, a giant sculpture in the town square, whether that you know, is a, some, you know, just some, some little houses at the base of a tree that are supposed to be a fairy village, um, it, it doesn't matter. I mean, it, if it evokes a strong emotional response in somebody and it didn't need to be, somebody did it maybe for the sake of doing it, maybe for a very specific purpose, it's art to me. At its base level, art is subjective. The same thing that gives any validity to my opinion gives the same validity to your opinion. And if we can all get on that same page and accept that, then I think we can accept a lot of things as art and see that there's value in that, that somebody's time, somebody's passion, somebody's creativity came out in some type of a form that can be experienced by other people. And that's all that matters. So I have a very broad view of art for those reasons exactly. It can be what you want it to be. And for me, it's photography. But this is super, like this is like, 
what I seriously get a kick out of, of this park and the urban parks in general. I mean, I say this all the time, but just the idea that you can see the buildings in the background and hear the hustle and bustle of the city right around you, but still kind of look and just the other way and it's nature and it's beautiful and it's, it's right there that this is the best. I love this park so much. <laughs> they finally gone? <laughs> I think so. Yeah. I, th I think circumstances that, you know, a lot of them that I created kind of put me in a situation where I'm not the type of guy that's going to be taking the, you know, the twice yearly vacation to some exotic place or things like that. And, you know, after living in Chicago and Houston, you know, two of the four largest cities in the country, I've set my sights for the moon on things that were beyond my reach and that's okay. Uh, it doesn't mean that I'm settling. It means that I know what I want. I do like the, the urban aspect and being close to a city. I also do like nature. And I think Toledo has really afforded me an opportunity to get all of that in one little package where I can have the downtown things that, that keep me happy to see the hustle and bustle of life and people moving and the, the speed of business and all those things that get my synapses firing. But to also be able to 10 minutes away go to a park or go down by a river or be not far from the lake. I mean, you, you just, you can't get that at most places. And I'm aware that Toledo has that, so I can have the best of both worlds and have a level of comfort that I can afford here. Uh, that has, that base level stuff has really afforded me opportunities to really dive into my interests. And that's where me loving the city and caring about what happens and finding beauty in it every single day and everywhere I go has attracted people like the Metro Parks or Destination Toledo or Toledo.com or Connect Toledo or all of these people that all have their own missions to do kind of what I'm doing and that's helped Toledo put its best foot forward. I think this is a great place like I'm not dumb like I said I didn't settle for anything. I chose to come back to Toledo and I see a lot of value here. I see a lot of greatness in this tiny little city. And I know other people will see that if they give it the same chance that I do. And I tell people all the time, if you know they want to complain about Toledo, maybe they don't like it. This, they don't think this is the city for them. Anywhere has got to be better. Been there, done it. I tell them, go ahead, go move, go check it out. Maybe you end up being right, and that's a great feeling. But if you're wrong, you're going to be welcomed back to Toledo the same way that I was and we can build from there. I know what is happening here right now in this city is unlike anything that's ever happened in my lifetime, and I wanna be here, I wanna be a part of this. I, I say it over and over again. I think just what I'm doing anyway, just to show the beautiful side of where I live is attracting these people that agree with my sentiments and like the way that I represent this city and myself and they want to be a part of it. And I think that's really becoming the secret of my success is just going hard at what I know and what I really care about. And if you're doing the good things, it's going to attract the good people. Pseudo Creatives, it's, all of this has happened in such a whirlwind, fast order. Uh, I had started about a year and a half ago. Uh, I went to a lecture that Ben Morales gave. He's a local photographer and graphic designer and he is beyond local if you you know what we're talking about but Ben it, did a lecture over at University of Toledo that I went to with a prior photography group called ISO 419 and that was the first photography lecture I'd ever heard uh, in person and it was amazing I mean Ben's such a nice relatable kind person soft-spoken but when he shows his images you know that you're dealing with a pro and kind of a genius. I mean, he's, he's affected my photography a lot. Just, just with his black and white has affected the way I do my color. And that was something I knew right then, I'm gonna get value out of being part of a photography group. And so they had one more meeting before you know what hit and kind of ruined everything. Well, over the time off of the summer of 2020, ISO 419 never really came back together. But a new group called Toledo Creatives had gotten started. And when the Metro Parks were trying to pass issue 17 last November, they had 
enlisted the help of the Toledo creatives to try and get the word out uh, about the ballot initiative and help explain to people what it was, why it was important, and how it was going to help us produce where we're, we're sitting right now. So I wanted to be a part of that to support the Metro Parks, and I thought, okay, well, I need a new photography group, so let me go check these guys out. And I went and met some of the leaders, and I got some stickers. And <laughs> Oh boy, have we been on a ride ever since then. And that group has done so much for me. I'm one of the older members in it. Nobody treats me like I'm old. It's about what we're doing, what we're thinking, what we're feeling, and how we're putting it into visual imagery. It's more than photographers. It's videographers. It's makeup artists. It's actors. It's actresses. It's artists. It's filmmakers. It's you name it. And just the broad scope of what's in there fits who I am so much that I'm not just going to be hanging around with wedding photographers. I'm not just going to be hanging out with filmmakers. That's just not how I work. That's not how I roll. That's not how I play. And this group is got all of that in spades and it brings out the best in me just following along with what a lot of these people do have done learning more about their personalities and how that affects their work has really affected a lot of what I do has shown me maybe things that I want to emulate and some of these 20 year olds knew how much I respect and admire what they do it might blow their mind because they are always telling me how great they think it is what I'm doing and I'm like you no, what you're doing is why I'm doing what I'm doing. And it's all love, it's a great thing, and I'm so proud to be a part of it. Well, part of my editing process is pulling my shadows way back in post, and then I rebuild them with RGB tone curves, and it's, my printing really affects my editing and stuff. But watching the way that Ben works with light and shadows and the way that he can turn a scene that I could probably imagine in my head as I'd see it through my eyes, but he can turn it into a gothic piece of art. And that, he's not scared of the black. He's not scared of the shadows. And he embraces them. And those are the focal point sometimes right outside of whatever the subject of his photo is. And that has challenged me to say, why are you avoiding these? What is it that you don't like about your photos when you have an emphasis on shadows? And that challenged me a lot to really think about that and make some changes and it, it did. It changed my entire workflow. Dirty Kicks has done a lot for me as well. Uh, just seeing the way that they use black and white has absolutely affected the way that I use color in respect to light and shadows. I'm inspired by life in general. And what I mean by that is having the opportunity to live this. As I get a little older and start to get some perspective, I realize how short our lives really are and how easy it is to just say the old Smashing Pumpkin line, uh, tomorrow is just an excuse away. But eventually we're gonna run out of tomorrows. And all of these good moments that we have, they're, they're not gonna be there anymore. So it's important to me to recognize that in the moment and to take full advantage of it, to not miss things. I mean, FOMO is a real thing and I don't think that's a bad thing because if you're not living, there's nothing to fear, but while I'm here, I wanna have fun, I wanna enjoy this, I wanna say I made my mark, I wanna say that I was here, that I inspired other people, that somebody may have seen a photo that I took of a statue and said, you know what, that, that was really cool, that inspired me to go from little small handheld things that I was doing on a bench to getting a slab of granite and going vertical. I mean, if just little things like that that may turn into it changed somebody's life that inspires me because I can name a long line, we don't have time for it, of people that, that kept life and light alive in me when I was at some pretty low points with my drinking and wondering if life was ever gonna be good again. And it is, and it's because I made it that way, and it's because I had people help me do that. So that spark that they gave me to reinvigorate my own life and do something with this is something that you can only get from another person and I've got that to share and that's my inspiration is life and to give somebody else the spark to want to embrace it as well. Elsa's my bud and 
I literally can't believe she's real sometimes. I mean, you see her in the photos, everybody knows her. She's just a living Muppet. And I had gotten her by accident. At the time, I wasn't ready for a dog when I was living in Houston. I just moved there. I didn't even have my own place. I didn't have a car. I had no business owning a dog. But my friends that let me live there with them to get my start, they decided to get one for their four-year-old daughter. And the daughter was a, a frozen freak. She loved her Disney movie. And of course, Elsa had to be Elsa. Uh, they decided after not too long they were not going to be able to keep Elsa and I'd already fallen in love with her. I kept the name and I kept the dog and ready or not, Elsa was in my life. That was towards the end. She's, she's the last creature on this planet that saw me drunk and that's a big deal to me because I had to, along with a lot of other reasons that I quit drinking and I can understand a little bit of what parents go through, but you got to do better for your kids and Elsa's my kid. And there were too many times that I'd come home from work and race to the bottle rather than racing her to the park or get up in the morning and go right back to sleep because I felt like crap. And I didn't want to take her to the park and said, I'll get you after work. And then after work would come and the same thing would happen. And I knew I wasn't doing right by her. And she was there. She was the only one that was there for me a lot of times at my low points in Houston before I came back here. And it affected me greatly to know that she deserved more and that I had to find some way to step up and do that for her. And over time, just, you know, instead of going out to the bars and staying up late, we'd get up early and we'd start going out for little road trips to explore Houston and start getting a little further outside. And mm, she's pretty good in the car. And hey, she likes going places. And yeah, she's okay being down here in, this, in the big city. Yeah, she's cool out here in the fields, in the forests. And I start getting this idea that Elsa, it doesn't matter where we go as long as she's with me, she's happy. And I'm always happy having her along. So we have just, over almost seven years now, this mid-October, uh, we have formed just an amazing partnership. I don't know what I'd even do without her. Um, I still owe her a, a fenced-in backyard and then I'll have basically fulfilled every promise I made to her when I told her I'm gonna quit drinking, get this together and be the dad that you need. And she's rewarded me with being the best friend I, I could ever have imagined.